I encourage you not to just sit in thinking that emotional eating is just something you're gonna deal with for the rest of your life because it's not. It can be if you want it to be, but don't get stuck in that mindset. Just got done eating supper. Do you call it supper or dinner? I grew up calling it supper and I don't know anyone else who does. Um, what did I have? I had I had the food that I planned to take for lunch because I packed a lunch because I forgot that I had a coworker coworker's lunch date. So that made deciding on supper pretty easy tonight. And it was brown rice, tomatoes, cucumbers, feta cheese, olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder. And I forgot that I meant to put avocado, diced avocado in there too. So we'll get them next time. Um, and whilst I was eating, I finished an episode of Father Brown. Now, we will touch on that at the end of this episode because I have things to say. But today we're talking about emotional eating. Now, I never, I don't consider myself an emotional eater. I never considered myself an emotional eater, even though I kind of was a bit an emotional eater. Um, it was never like, oh, I'm super sad, so I'm just going to eat neat and eat. It wasn't, it wasn't so upfront that like I was upset so I'd eat. But today I was at work and I it was just it's just one of those times in the work cycle where I have routine things that I need to do and addition in addition to that I have a couple outlying things that I need to do that are time sensitive plus the daily tasks that I do every day, but the, everything just seems to be time sensitive and like, and the thing that I, I had on the top of my priority list, I worked on, it's a Monday when I'm recording this. I worked on all day Friday before the weekend and it was pretty close to being done. I had a few things that I needed to change and then today I had to start all over on it. And I wasn't even like on the surface, I wasn't mad. I, I like there was a tinge of frustration, but like I knew I could do it and I knew I'd be able to get it done in time. But at the same time, I could feel like I knew I wasn't hungry, but I wanted to eat. And I recognized that it didn't make the desire to eat and like the cravings that surfaced go away. But I recognized that I was feeling overwhelmed and I, it was kind of like having to talk myself down about like, you use eating as a distraction. You want to reach for food because it will distract you and numb you from dealing with this thing that you can do and you can take care of and you can do on time. Like it's, you can do it. But at the same time, I was just like, oh, I don't, I have all this stuff going on and I just don't want to deal with it. So trying to just focus on one task at a time. But that is emotional eating can definitely be part of binge eating. So I have a history with binge eating. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Rachel. This is I'm Bringing Healthy Back. And I'm a recovered binge eater, but I still, there's like fallout from habits that I had and mindsets that I had through that, that I'm still conquering. And so one of those is emotional eating. Like I said, it's not like, oh, I'm sad I'm going to eat a pint of ice cream. It's like there's negative emotions that I just don't want to deal with. So I just um, I eat food. And I am a lot better at not doing that now. And I saw it in myself today. But an acronym that can help explain why some people binge eat is HALT. H-A-L-T stands for hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. And the A for angry, I think you can flesh out because anger is a negative emotion. Like it's not happy emotion. It's not considered a quote good emotion. Like most people don't like being angry. Like it's not something people enjoy, but people don't enjoy being sad. People don't 
enjoy grief. They don't enjoy anxiety. They don't enjoy jealousy. They don't enjoy envy. Like all, they don't enjoy stress. All of these emotions that we don't like and we oftentimes try to run away from. And everyone has a vice and some vices are healthy. Like going to exercise to just work out the stress or journaling or prayer or spending time in God's word or calling a friend or calling someone wise in your life to just be like um, an advisor to you. Um, But oftentimes we have negative vices and emotional eating can be one. So do you, are you an emotional eater? I, I didn't think I was, but I, I am to a point and I don't think it's healthy, but I think it's healthy that I have realized that like today I could pinpoint, I'm like in the morning I was like, wow, why do I just want food? Like I physically am not hungry. Like, okay, maybe my body just needs more energy today, but then it was like not going away. And so I was able to finally recognize like, oh, I've got a lot on my mind. I have a lot on my to-do list. I'm a little stressed right now and I would like to not have to deal with any of it. Um, So I think it's a good first step is just admitting it to yourself. Like, okay, I use food to deal with this. Okay. Now I'm no expert. I clearly have not 100% conquered it, but how do you stop emotional eating? once you recognize that you do it. I think that's gonna be different for everyone. Everyone, like for me, I don't know if talking to someone about it helps me because in my mind, I'm not like, I know that I'm gonna tell them this, but then I have to go, I still have to take care of and handle all the things I have to take care of and handle. So for me today, it was just, okay, we have to start from scratch on this task that we almost completed on Friday. And you have time to get everything else done, but let's don't even think about, don't even think about it. Just focus on the one task ahead, focus on one thing. And to be honest, this started this morning when I was in bed and I woke up and I had, I knew I had a bunch of stuff to do today. And I just, I like wanted to stay in bed, hide under my covers. And it was literally a war with myself. It was a, luckily it was a quick battle. Thank the Lord of just channeling your mind. Like, okay, triaging your mind. Okay, I need to take care of this. For me, that was what it was. I was like, we we aren't gonna be able to handle everything at once. So we need to prioritize and you can do all the things. Now for me, is all very logical. Like everything I need to do is not personal. It's not, it doesn't involve people's emotions. It's literally just, I just got to get the jobs done. But a lot of times emotional eating can come from our lives and the people in our lives. And I can't tell you how to handle that because I am no expert. And like I said, that's going to be different for everyone. So what other vices can we put in place of using food to distract us, to numb us? And people talk about wanting to break bad habits. Do we ever break a habit or do we replace habits? So what can we do to replace that habit, that vice of just eating when we don't want to deal with something? This is where I'm asking you, if you're listening on YouTube, to drop some comments because it may not be just one vice, one thing that you do instead of eating. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's coloring. Maybe it's calling your best friend. Maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's prayer. Maybe it's baking something. Yeah, that's related to food, but that's okay. It can be a creative outlet. I think the big thing is just being aware of what you're doing. And it's like trying to problem solve that, reverse engineer, like, okay, I am not well. I'm not emotionally well. I have these negative feelings, emotions going on. I can either deal with them right now 
or I can distract myself and deal with them sometime in the future. But what would be the healthiest distraction? I don't know what that is for you. Is it building some Legos? Having a cup of tea? Just going outside? Cleaning? Stress cleaning? Is that a thing? I don't have the answers for you. But I wanted to talk about this because I think it's important. I think it's an important part of healing your relationship with food, relationship with your body image, your mental health. It all ties together and it, it affects all aspects of our lives. So if you're emotional, an emotional eater, you are not alone. But I encourage you not to just accept that. Because using food to numb and distract is not healthy physically for your body, like eating usually not good food and usually eating too much food. Not good. And I am a total hypocrite saying this, that you're just avoiding doing or taking care of what is going to have to be done anyway. And if you're going to delay the inevitable you might as well let it be a healthier vice than eating too much of the not most nutrient dense food so I don't know if this has been beneficial to anyone I sure hope so um leave a comment if you want if you're listening on YouTube if you're on if you're listening on podcast I'll leave the link to the YouTube video down below if you want to hop on over and leave a comment Just don't accept that emotional eating is the way you'll always deal with the hard things in life. Because there's always going to be hard things in life. There are going to be ups and downs. Everything's temporary. But don't abuse food. Don't abuse your body by abusing food. Now, I'm just going to talk about Father Brown and some books I've been reading and the other TV show that I've recently finished and I have thoughts on. So, Father Brown. What season am I in? I don't know. I'm probably in like season five. I still enjoy it. It's Ron Weasley's father from Harry Potter. He's Father Brown. And he does a great Father Brown. But uh, was it a season or two ago? Lady Felicia. Is that her name? Lady F. She left. And so did Sid. And ever since then, it's not the same. Like... They brought in another female character to kind of like take the role-ish of Lady F. But then Sid is just gone and I miss Sid. It's just not the same without Sid. And then uh, for the past month or two, I had been watching Grimm, the TV show. I was watching it on Amazon Prime and I really enjoyed it at first. And there's going to be spoilers this, the TV show, the like the last series, I think came out in 2017. So it's not like it's new, but I will be talking about spoilers. So if you want like a dark kind of fantasy, but like modern fantasy, like real world fantasy with a little bit of comic relief, a little bit, like just enough, like I don't like like dark horror, thriller, suspense things, but I liked Grimm. Like, I liked Wednesday on Netflix, Wednesday Adams. So if you liked Wednesday, I think you might like Grimm. Um, okay, so Nick is with Juliet. Okay, love them. They're great. They're so great. And then the things happened with Juliet. And then Adeline... No one likes Adeline. And then they put Adeline, spoiler coming up here, so if you don't want to, if you don't want to know about it, you need to click ahead. They put Adeline with Nick. And <sighs> still spoilers going on here, so keep skipping. Nick ends up with Adeline in the end, and I don't like it. Like, after, after Juliet the thing with Juliet happened and her and Nick were no longer together. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so mad. I was so mad. The only reason I think I kept watching were Monroe and Rosalie. They were the glue to the show. Honestly, they were the glue to the show. They were, 
the only stable people. And Wu. <laughs> Wu is hilarious. His, <laughs> his facial expressions, they get me. He's great. However, the season, the series finale, I was crying <laughs> because spoilers still. So keep skipping if you're if you're trying to skip the spoilers. He lost everyone. He lost everyone. And then they flip it on you. And no one understands why he's so happy. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I was crying. So even though I hate that Nick and Adeline, happy ending at the end. It's, it's okay. I didn't know the very last bit with... Um, Kelly and Diana when they're older and then they go to meet the triplets like I wanted more I feel like they almost wrapped it up like too quick like I wanted to see the triplets as babies and I kind of wanted a little bit more of an epilogue but we can't always get what we want so now I'm watching Father Brown and it's okay I miss Sid um I'm not always just watching the show. I usually always have it on in the background, like when I'm cooking, when I'm editing, clearly not when I'm filming, um, when I'm cleaning. It's just, I like having it on, the sound on in the background, but I like it to be something that I like. So, oh my gosh, tomorrow. Okay, this is Monday, August 7th. Tomorrow, Tuesday, August 8th, on Hulu, the third season of Only Murders in the Building is airing. And I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a, oh my gosh. If you haven't seen that show, I, it's, if you like true crime and you like, okay, if you like New Girl, if you liked New Girl and you like true crime, I think you will like it. It's like ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like lay people trying to solve murders that are happening in their building. It's ridiculous. And I'm here for it. I was, I was going to say, like, if you have any show suggestions, please let me know. But only murders in the building. I'm sure I'll get through that in like a week. So I will, you can all, you can leave suggestions, please. But now let's go on to books. Okay, so, um, for a while I've been reading Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. It's a slow go for this one. Honestly, I'm um, about two-thirds of the way through. It's moving real slow. Okay, I can't believe I'm two-thirds. It's moving real slow. I'm sure I will like the end of it, but I'm kind of, I'm a little over it right now. And then I've been reading The Pilgrim's Progress and good book. It has had me crying, like at the pool, crying over a book because I have a sensitive soul um, and the Lord knows that. And Pilgrim's Progress is just steeped in Christian faith and just a reminder of God's love for us, like the moments of like tribulation for um, Christian and the reminders of God's providence and the Lord's ultimate sacrifice for everyone because he wants every soul to be saved. My soul is sensitive and I have cried over this multiple times and I'm like a quarter of the way through. So that's a slow read for me because sometimes like life is heavy to begin with. And I know the Lord's word is important. That's why I try to stay in that every day. But sometimes I just want to use reading as an escape. Like oftentimes TV shows can be an escape, but I think reading is better for my brain and my attention span like building that back up. So I have this book. I went to Barnes and Noble this weekend. It was raining on Saturday. It was like 
perfect bookstore cafe reading weather because it was just gloomy and rainy all day. Oh my gosh, it was perfect. So I had seen one of the booktubers I enjoy. I just like her personality. I don't even know if I, I don't always, I don't think I'll read half the books she, that she's uh, more than that. I probably won't read a lot of the books she suggests, but I just enjoy her personality and how she talks about books. And um, this one was some, one that she recommended, and I n didn't really know much about it. I think it's a young adult book, um, but like adults can read it too. It's kind of magic, magical children. Anywho, we need to look at the cover. So, The House in the Cerulean Sea, but I need you to look at these edges. Gorgeous. So I am just about halfway done with this book. I think I've already, I think I've, there's, we're on our journey of a queer love story subplot, and it's just not for me. But it is the subplot, and I am excited to see where the rest of the story goes. Because there's this caseworker, and he's in charge of ensuring that these orphanages that take in magical children are good for the children. And this is a very unique orphanage with some of the could be most dangerous slash unique magical children. And so he's he lives by the book. Linus is the caseworker. He lives and works by the book. And this is testing him. So, um, very pretty book. I think I've already, I'm, I don't think that's fair, but I honestly, like in my brain, this book already has a 3.5 out of five star rating. We'll see where it goes. Okay, we'll see where it goes. It's one of those books that is just easy. It's easy to read. It's not super heavy. It's just not that deep, but it is. There's a few things. It's just, I think it's just the author has a little bit of a different worldview and different, like different thoughts and opinions on things. And that's fine. I'm not mad about it. It's just not, I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't share his thoughts and views and opinions and beliefs. And that's fine. That is okay. I'm still going to finish the book. And then I might buy another book. Even though I don't need to buy any more books, I have more books at home that I... <sighs> Most of my books are not as fun, though. I just want easy ones sometimes. But enough rambling. I feel like half of this video was me talking about how I cannot help you beat your emotional eating, but just know that you are not alone. And you can get through it. And I encourage you not to just sit in thinking that emotional eating is just something you're going to deal with the rest, deal with for the rest of your life because it's not. It can be if you want it to be, but don't get stuck in that mindset. I have faith in you. And then if you guys want to share with me what books you're reading, what podcasts you're listening to, what TV shows or movies you've been into lately, I would love that. So leave a comment if you're listening on YouTube. I know I rambled half the time about things I like that have nothing to do with health, but you know what? I think it's healthy to tend the garden of things that you enjoy. It's okay to rediscover childlike joys sometimes. So I think that is healthy and I think it is important to share. So um, if you guys want more content, be sure to subscribe or follow. Hit that like button if you liked today's video and if you missed the last episode, of I'm Bringing Healthy Back. I will leave it up here on screen for you to click to, or I will link it down below in the show notes for you guys. And I will see you guys there.